I recently posted a video on how to make better eggs and one of the comments I got in that video was from Chris Gentile and he said you need to clean up your sealer and yes he kind of chided me about that and I totally agree I usually keep my sealer on the counter next to the mixer and every now and then you know when you're mixing things food will be thrown out and things will be splashed and so my sealer over the over the years it, 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 it got dirty and so it's time to clean it up and while we're doing it we're going to change out the uh, barrier tape which is a Teflon uh, cloth we're going to replace the heating element inside here we're going to swap out uh, the upper pressure pad and clean that up and so we're going to go through the sealing machine and show you how to clean it how to adjust it how to rebuild it if you bought your machine from Harvest Right, there's probably a good chance you got one of these little packages right here that contains two heating elements and two uh, Teflon uh, barrier tapes. So we're going to go ahead and use those parts to replace the parts on here. It's a pretty simple thing. All you really need to have is basically a screwdriver with a, a Phillips and a plain slot. and I usually use this type of cleaner right here. This is called Goo Gone. It's a citrus base cleaner, which will help dissolve a lot of the oils and grime and gunk that you find around a kitchen. Um, this is a pretty good little product right here. And you can find this at AutoZone and many other places, or you can just use a generic citrus cleaner. And in some cases you might need some high heat uh, gasket material. I'll show you where this comes in. So we're going to go ahead and start stripping this apart. The first thing you got to remember is you want to unplug it. We want to be safe. And there's a couple of cautionary areas up here too. For example, right here on the channel where the upper pad goes, this corner right here can be kind of sharp. And as you're putting this upper pad back into position, you got to be, want to be careful about cutting your skin on this sharp edge right there. So we're going to go ahead and start taking this apart. Like I said, it's pretty simple. And then we're going to clean it up and reassemble it. So here we go. Now, one other thing I need to caution you about when taking this machine apart is do not take off this arm. Uh, there's a pin right here that holds this arm into place. And if I can swing this around, I'll show you this. So right here is this little Phillips screw right there that is a set screw that holds the pin into place. If you needed to take off this arm, and I caution you not to do it unless you absolutely positively have to, you'd remove back out this screw by about two or three turns. And then using like a screwdriver, like a Phillips screwdriver, you can push out this pin and remove the pin. But once you do this, this little bracket attachment right here is under a little bit of pressure with a spring down below. When this pin is removed, the spring and the spring down below will fall out of place and you'll hear it. And unless you know how to put that spring back into place, it can cause a great deal of frustration. And then putting this pin back through, you have to pass it through this bracket, then you have a the bracket for the arm, and then you have a spacer, then another bracket, then a bracket for the arm, trying to get everything lined up to put reinsert this pin is is difficult and can be quite frustrating so the, before we pull everything apart I'm going to take off the bottom plate of the sealer and show you how this spring that's inside is uh, located and how to put it back into place Now, you'll have to remove the four legs here, and they're just held on with a Phillips screw. Not a big problem. When it comes time to putting these legs back into place, if you don't have them e equally tightened, your uh, sealer will be wobbly. So you might have to adjust the screws in and out so that all four legs are 
equal length so it doesn't wobble on you and that can take a, a little bit of time to make those adjustments. And I'd also use like a bowl or something to keep all your parts in so they don't get lost. So we're just going to kind of snap off this bottom plate right here. Now, if you can see that the upper bracket, and well, you really probably can't see this, but the upper bracket has this little hump or little bump that sticks out. And the large end of the spring sits on top of this little hump. And then the other end of the spring just goes right against the wall, right above the micro switch. So when this, when this bracket right here is removed, this spring will fall out. And so once everything is replaced, you can just compress the spring. It's not that tight and just put it over the hump and right above the switch. And as you can see here, you can kind of see how this operates. So, I made the mistake long, long time ago taking it out, and it was quite frustrating on how to put that back into place. So we're just going to leave this off for now. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, and we'll con con continue onward. So the next thing we want to do, we're going to go ahead and take off these two uh, side plates that hold the Teflon fabric into place. There's a total of six screws. And then we're going to go ahead and remove this cover here. Okay, so this plate is off and we have this plate back here is off and we're just going to head and take off the Teflon fabric and put that aside. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take off the uh, heating element and there's a cover right here on the end has one Phillips screw just going to take that off and then underneath you'll see it there'll be a contacting screw on this end and this end now it's very nice to have a Phillips screwdriver that is magnetized so that way when you put a screw on it the screw stays in place that's going to be really helpful for this next part if your screwdriver is not magnetized, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I have this regular screwdriver and I have a screw right here. You can kind of see that this is not magnetized. So if you take a magnet, any type of magnet, and this may sound kind of silly, but if you can find where north is and to me and where I live, north is in this direction. If you get a magnet and you rub it down the length of the screwdriver making larger loops because we don't we want to have the magnetic field pass through this shaft so we're just going to rub it in a north direction do that a few times and then voila you just made a magnet and that's going to come in really handy when it comes time for putting the screw back into place because there is this opening way back inside here where you have to put this screw. And if the screw falls inside, well, then you have to take the bottom. Well, we already took the bottom off anyway, but it's just gonna make it a lot easier to, to put this screw into place with a screwdriver that's magnetic. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this screw holding down the element. And we're going to pop that out. And then we're going to reach way back in here and remove this screw. And this is a one that can fall down inside if you're not careful or if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver. Okay, so that's out of place. And this is the heating element right here. And it's pretty filthy. I've I looked at my inventory list and I've so far I've done six, about 1600 uh, Mylar bags and so this is the first time I've actually replaced this element right here. The next thing you can or cannot do, if, you, if it's, it's more of elective, I got a bunch of garbage on this lower pad and you can see my lower pad is no longer attached to the sealer 
And so we're going to take this off. And this is where this high heat uh, adhesive will come into place. We're going to re-glue this back into place because often when you're putting everything back into place, if this moves around, it just makes it harder. So we're going to eventually reseal this back on top. The next part we're going to remove, if you take a look at this upper ceiling pad, it's all really disgusting. It's all burnt from uh, all the bags I've done. If you just take your th thumb down here, you can pick up the end of it and you can pull that right out of the channel, just like that. Now you can either replace this or what we're gonna do, we're just gonna flip it over and use the other side. After several years, if this side gets dirty, then I can go ahead and replace this part and I'll give you a few contacts on where you can find replacement parts for the 12 inch impulse sealer. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this handle and then once everything is off like it is, it's gonna make it easier to clean and really you're gonna use the Goo Gone and a terry top uh, cloth to clean all that up. My sealer is all nice and clean, so I hope Chris will be pleased with that. The first part we're going to do, we're going to take this dirty upper uh, pressure pad and we're going to flip it upside down and we're going to just go ahead and put it right through this channel right here. Now these two on the end of this channel, it can be very, very sharp and this is where you want to be very, very careful sliding this back in. Your finger is going to kind of come up against here and you want to be careful not to cut your fingers on this sharp edge. Just be real cautious. Now in some cases, this channel will just, will just slide in really nice without any problem. If you start pushing your the strip down through this channel and it starts binding up, well, don't put any oil on it that is petroleum based, but you can lightly put a little bit of vegetable oil or cooking oil on this channel to make it easier to push into place. So we're just gonna push this all the way back down, being careful not to get too close to that sharp edge there just like that and you just want to make sure that everything is centered on both ends of this channel so that's back into place no problem the next thing we're going to do is we're going to reattach the lower pad onto the sealer using some high heat gasket sealer and I believe this product made by Permatex goes up to about 850 degrees. We're going to take a little dab of this, put this on the piece of paper, and I just have a little toothpick here. So I'm just going to put just a small, slight little film along the top of this just enough to hold this into place. We don't want to put too much. We don't want to get it disgusting looking. The original sealer that was used was white in color. And I don't know where to find something like that. Okay, just something like that. And then we're going to take the lower pad and we're just going to lay it on top of here and center it between the two contact points. Now just with the adhesion of this pretty much keeps it into place but something like that. Okay so we're going to get our little replacement kit and we're going to pull out the brand new heating element. Now when you're holding this, I mean it's okay to touch it, but wherever you're going to touch it, you're going to get some film or some oil on this from your fingers. And when you first heat this up, when you first use the sealer, you're going to see some smoke coming up from different places while your uh, oils from your finger are burning off. So we're just going to lay that on top of here. Now. The two contact points are under a little bit of tension and so it's going to be easier to come in and reattach it back in here first and then attach it on the front. And this is where it's nice to have a magnetic 
screw driver so we can put the screw on that and it holds it into place and that way we can get back inside here and start the screw here. And we don't want to tighten it up all at once. We want to leave this somewhat loose until the other side is put in. Now to put this other side in can be a little bit difficult because like I said these con these electrical contact points are kind of under they're kind of spring loaded if you know what I mean so I took a little piece of paper and I folded it up and bent it over to make like a little pa paper wedge and what we're going to do we're going to push this contact forward put the paper wedge behind it and that will hold it into place while we put the screw in so we're just going to Take this and put this one in place. And we're going to snug that up, take out our little paper wedge. And then I can come back and tighten this one in the rear. There we go. So we have the lower pad into place. We have the element on top. The next thing we need to do is we're going to get ready to put the Teflon cloth in, but we need to put in the side supports, the side clamps next. Now, just one note about these uh, side crimps, these side supports that hold the, the fabric into place. As the screw goes into this, and if you over tighten these, it has a tendency to flare out this inner uh, hole right here so it doesn't lay flat. If that happens to be the case, you can just kind of turn this over and with a screwdriver or hammer, just tap lightly. And you can kind of smooth the uh, flared out end back flat so that this lays flat against the sealer. So we're going to go ahead and put these back into place but we're not going to tighten it up to start the threads to start the screws but leave it nice and loose okay so these are nice and loose on top of here that's what we want we're going to take the Teflon fabric out of here and we're going to lay this back on on top and we're just going to slide it underneath these strips here so I have one side done and this is where a regular screwdriver comes in handy so you can kind of lift this up and just fold over and tuck in this other side. We're just going to take the screwdriver and we can just slide that down and as it slides down it'll just tuck the other side into place like that. And then we want to center this Teflon pad so it's centered this way and centered this way. like so and this next step is where it's nice to have an extra set of hands but I'm here by myself today so I'm gonna have to use a zip tie you can maybe use a wire or a string to go underneath the uh, sealer what we want to do we want to bring this all the way down and put pressure on it and I'm attach this zip tie To hold it down and while the pressure is being held down we're going to go ahead and tighten these side supports or else someone could hold it down for you as you're tightening this 
And remember, these are just going to be snug. You don't need to torque these to 100 foot-pounds. Okay, so those are all nice and tight. We can go ahead and cut this off and take out our zip tie. Okay, we then have to put we have to put this cover back into place. Okay, so everything is back into place. The only thing we have left to do now is put the bottom plate back on that we took off. And if we would have lost any screws or anything like that, it would have just fallen right through and we would have had access to them. We don't want to tighten these all the way tight because the tighter you make them, the more the legs will compress and your sealer will not be level. So if we bring this over, okay, I have to look out. So the sealer is nice and steady. It's not rocking. So I'm going to tighten these up just a hair and hopefully I don't take them out of level. Okay, so everything's just fine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and test this now. Everything's back together. We're going to go ahead and plug this in. And I have an old piece of mylar here. We're going to make sure this is all the way up on the high setting. And when we, the first time we do this, we're probably going to see a little bit of smoke coming off as it burns off any uh, oils that might have been on my fingers. And so here's the sill. Uh, there's a little, you can see a little bit of smoke go, going there. So we're just going to seal this a couple of times to heat up the element, to burn everything off and to clean everything up. Now this piece right here is sticking out a little bit too much. It's kind of hitting there. So we're just going to kind of push this back into place a little bit. Okay. And that clears just fine. And I always like holding it there just a minute to let everything rest. And you know, when you have a good seal, when you can see the imprint of the Teflon uh, fabric in your seal. Let's see if we can turn that down a bit and see what happens. Yep, that's that's a good seal. Okay, so my sealer is back to normal. Has a brand new heating element, brand new fabric, and it's nice and clean. So I hope Chris will give me a pass now, and I can continue on. Uh, using the sealer for many years to come and pretty much the only uh, disposable parts you have on the sealer is going to be the heating element and the fabric uh, the Teflon fabric up here but there is a couple of places if Harvest Right is not able to provide you uh, parts for this if something were to break or whatever there are a couple of places on the internet you can get parts uh, I have one place that I've found called mybinding.com, but if you're looking for a company that has this, there's, there's three things you've got to look for in finding replacement parts. One is you've got to find a sealer that's going to be 12 inches long. You need to find a sealer that has the same style handle that right here, not like the little knob style, but has to be this style right here. And then on the control face, it has to be this particular shape. And if you, if you get those three down, you're pretty much going to be on the right path of getting the right parts. So 12 inches, match up the handle, match up the face, and you'll probably be pretty good in finding a, a place that has replacement parts. So I hope this video has been uh, useful and that you learned something. Um, freeze drying can be addictive. It's a great thing to do. Uh, it's, a, it's a great service to your family to have a good food supply. And I'd pretty like to thank you for your time that you gave me. And if you would subscribe, I'd appreciate that. That makes it uh, possible for me to do these videos. So until next time, 
go forth and freeze dry the world.